Give me my health regen. Yeah, see, when it hits, it, it works. <laughs> it's just but that's all right. Yo guys, what is up? Max and I'm poorly in this video, and today we're going over every single weapon that was buffed in the most recent hotfix, giving you the percentage increases, what was changed, and if they are worth your time to use, and we'll also be giving them a score out of 10 to rank these weapons, uh, and basically let you know which ones are good and which ones are not. If you guys do enjoy the video, if you find it helpful, be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, guys, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so the first buff to talk about is the Hellfire. Now, the Hellfire is a dull SMG. It is locked fire elemental, and you can get one from Jabber Mogwai. This thing did not get a damage increase on its gun damage. It got a dot damage increase, so I can like I can see what they're going for here. They want it to be more of a dot focused damage gun. Uh, however, it only got a 10 times damage buff on its dot, which sounds substantial, but it's at 49k dot damage. You look at something like a projectile recursion at 71k, or a like kick charger with this like 110k dot. It just doesn't stack up. And when ranking this with my chat, we gave this thing a 3 out of 10. I would not recommend using the Hellfire. Next up is the Crossroads. Now, the Crossroads used to be one of my favorite SMGs in the game. In fact, it was my favorite SMG uh, when the game launched. It got nerfed to four pellets back in like 2019. This is its first, first buff. Since then, it fell hard out of the meta. It only got a 50% buff when you, we saw like the Redistributor and the Kibsworth getting 150% damage buffs. If they didn't want this thing to be viable at endgame, but they were more focused on it being a good like leveling weapon, that's totally fine with me and it makes sense. But for endgame, I do not recommend the crossroads when ranking it with my chat. We gave it a four out of ten. Our next weapon that got buffed is the Becca. Now I already made a whole video about this, so just a short debrief. It got a 200% damage increase. I think this is now, uh, besides like the Monarch, the best assault rifle, I put it in a head-to-head -head comparison against a Clairvoyance, and I just think the Becca performs better. I love this assault rifle. I should have a Jacob Zane build coming out pretty soon uh, that I've been messing around with. I'm trying to come out with a name for a Jacob Zane build. So if you guys have any names that you would suggest for a Jacob Zane build, be sure to drop a comment. I'm still working on that. Um, and then we're going on to our next buff. And our winner of this week's hotfix is the TK's Wave. Now this thing got the biggest buff out of any of the weapons this hotfix getting around a 230% damage increase. This thing, just for reference, fire versus fire, has more damage than a Hellwalker and has a larger crit hit damage bonus. The biggest thing with the Heat Wave or TK's Wave, uh, it, this can come in fire, shock, and non-elemental, and you get it from killing the dump truck enemy on Pandora. Uh, the biggest thing is at range, it can be very inconsistent and just not feel good. Uh, its spread is enormous, and you want to be landing as many pellets as you can on someone's head. The biggest thing, uh, and my big takeaway for this, if you're going to rock this weapon, is accuracy. Accuracy changes this thing and its performance immensely. To start, if you can get a Jacob's Company Man with Jacob's Accuracy 50 on it, this thing changes already. Uh, as you can tell, the spread is way better. Um, and then when we put this thing uh, and pair it with... For example, Mana Focus, which is going to give us um, increased accuracy every time we activate our action skill. Uh, this thing becomes way better to use. On Fadeaway Flak and Zane, um, you can actually start doing crazy, crazy things with this. And while it can be awkward to use and a little inconsistent when this thing hit, it hits hard. Uh, basically one-tapped bottom half of Wotan with this with a shock one. Once again, it can't come corrosive. And it was a consecutive hits anointed. So yeah, really cool things you can do with this. Definitely recommend. Uh, when I was ranking it with my chat, we gave this thing a 7 out of 10 just because it is really strong, but you need to build very specific and you need all the accuracy buffs you can get on it to make it work well. Next up, we have the NARP, a DLC-3 sniper rifle. Now, this thing is unique in that after you reload, based on the amount of ammo remaining in the mag, when you reload, you're going to get a damage bonus. However, that damage bonus is still capped at 10 magazine. So even boosting this thing past 10 magazine, you're not going to get any more bonus. This thing received a mag size increase by, I think, one or two magazine size, which does absolutely nothing for it because it was already capped out at 10. 
when reviewing this thing. I gave it the worst score out of any of this weapons. I do not think you should use this thing ever. It's pretty freaking terrible. In fact, a lot of people that I, when I was streaming this didn't even know about the NARP. Uh, out of 10, I gave this thing a 1 out of 10. Our next weapon up on the buffing block is the Lyuda. The Lyuda didn't actually receive any damage increase. However, it did get its magazine size, I believe, slightly more than doubled or just about doubled. Uh, this thing is now amazing on Moe's. You can run infinite Lyuda Moe's builds very easily and just never have to worry about ammo. Just spamming this thing with infinite amps. One thing about the Lyuda is you do need to give it the space for the bullets to split, which can make it a little awkward for mobbing, but for bossing uh, on Flak and on Moe's, this thing was really doing well. I know it didn't get a damage increase. I think I was sleeping on this thing a little bit. I gave it a 7 out of 10 when ranking it because I do think with the right build, kind of like the TK's wave, this thing can really shine. The Malix Bane is the next weapon that received a buff. The Malix Bane got a 65% damage increase. Unfortunately, I did not think that this was enough to take this weapon out of the meme category of sniper rifles. In fact, I couldn't even get past the door or even to the door without running out of ammo. This thing consumes like ridiculous amounts of ammo. It does hardly any damage. Even in the shotgun mode, you're going to be consuming a ton of ammo. And I just couldn't find a good use for this thing. Uh, in the weapons that I reviewed, I gave this the second worst score out of any of these weapons. 65% uh, buff, just not enough to cut it and make this thing worth your time. And our last weapon to discuss in today's video is the Polybius. Now, the Polybius got a like 16, 17, 18% buff around that range. Uh, this weapon is pretty mediocre I, I honestly had better performance using this thing than i did with the hellfire and crossroads which surprised me i really just don't like this shotgun uh, i do think it did perform better than the crossroads and the hellfire in my testing and so for that reason i gave it a 5 out of 10 i do not recommend using this weapon if you uh, have a reason to you can make it do decent things uh but it's just not not my weapon 5 out of 10 for this one and guys, that is it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Honestly, my biggest thing after going through all these hot fixes after week after week of these weapon buffs, my biggest thing that I would really love to see from Gearbox is just a little note of intention behind each change. I want to know why they buffed the crossroads by 50%, but the Becca by 200%. Uh, I do love these hot fixes, but if they didn't want the crossroads to be an end game meta weapon, and that's why they buffed it by 50%, that is just something that I'd want to know. You know what I mean? Uh, it would be really cool if they included those little notes so that we knew their intentions because if they don't want the Crossroads to be competing with like the Kibsworth and the Plasma Coil, that makes total sense. It doesn't need to be an endgame viable weapon, uh, but it's interesting seeing weapon buffs to like the Becca by like 200% and then the Hellfire just getting 10 times dot damage increase. Uh, guys, that is it for the video. Once again, make sure to uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Take care guys. Peace. I was